Last lesson, we were looking at some of the introductions to mechanics. And actually, the previous lesson we'd been doing before that. You OK, boys? Previous lesson before that, we'd been looking at vectors. And actually, it was quite nice that some of these last bits of vectors are coming into this introduction lesson about mechanics. After that, though, we'll be moving on and looking at constant acceleration, which should probably take us, I imagine, three or maybe four lessons. And it's a really, really important topic um, that kind of underpins a huge amount of mechanics. OK, first of all, though, we're going to just do this last part of the intro topic. Um, and it's going to be using some of our ideas of vectors. I think you should find this pretty quick, OK? It says a man walks from A to B and then from B to C. His displacement from A to B is 6i plus 4j. And his displacement from B to C is 5i minus 12j. It then it says, what is the magnitude of the displacement from A to C? And then it says, what is the total distance the man has walked in getting from A to C? Are there any suggestions of what could be a good starting point for this kind of, uh, for this kind of question? Yeah, a diagram would probably be a good starting point for this. Now, if you wanted to, you could do an accurate diagram, OK? Because we know that it's traveling 6 to the right and 4 up to go from A to B. And then it's going to be going 5 to the right and then 12 down from B to C. But really, the diagram is there just as a visual aid. It doesn't actually really need to be accurate because it's just there to help us think about what's going on. So to go from A to B is just going up. To go from B to C, it seems to be doing this kind of journey. But you know what? It wouldn't really have mattered if you'd done A, B, and C like this. It's still going to it's still going to give you the same maths that you would try and produce here. Okay? So I wouldn't worry about the sketch actually being something that's accurate at all. When you get to year thirteen, you won't have two-dimensional vectors. You will have three-dimensional vectors, and you're going to struggle drawing three-dimensional vectors accurately. So you might as well just get to the habit of just doing a sketch. Okay? So we know how to get from A to B and how to get from B to C. It says, what is the magnitude of the displacement from A to C? So I want to work out how I get from A to C. Um, very quickly, how do I get from A to C? Yeah, I just do A to B, and then I add on B to C. Now, A to B is 6, 4, so I'm going to do that back in my column form. B to C is 5 minus 12. So when we add those together, we get 6 plus 5, which is 11, and 4 minus 12, which is minus 8. But that's not what they've asked for. What's the additional step that's going to need to be taken here? <laughs> magnitude. So we need to do Pythagoras to this. I want to find out the magnitude of the vector AC, which I do is the square root of 11 squared plus 8 squared. So that's 121 plus 64. 185, so that's the square root of 185. But this is mechanics, OK? So I don't want to leave it as the square root of 185. I actually want to get that as a, um, as a number. And that comes out as 13.6. 13.6 what? Units. What's the units? Meters. Yeah, it's meters in this question. And I'm going to write that that is to three significant figures, OK? I want you, after you've written that down, I want you to talk to the person next to you. How is question B different to question A, and what will you need to do differently? How is question B different to question A, and what would you need to do differently? Just have a little think and tell the person next to you what you think is different. How is this question here different to this one? OK, anyone think that they, um, they can spot what the difference is between those questions? Nibel, what do you think is the, the difference between part A and part B of this question? Um, part B is bigger to work out the magnitude separately, like part A, B, and C, C. Yeah, I agree. I think you have to work out the magnitude of A, B, and B, C separately, because it says, what is the total distance that the man has walked? Well, he walked along here. And then he walked along here. What we've calculated in the first part of the question, this 13.6 metres, we've worked out that this distance here is 
So it's asking me something different now. It's not saying what's the displacement from A to C. It's saying how far did he walk along both of those red lines. So Nabil said we should find out the magnitude of AB. So I'll do the magnitude of AB, which is just Pythagorizing that non-real word that we have there, 6 squared plus 4 squared. So that's 36 plus 16. I'm going very slow. I haven't done any maths this morning at all, which is root 52. And then we're going to have uh, the modulus or the magnitude of BC. So we're going to do Pythagoras to this. <coughs> 5 squared plus 12 squared. That is 13. So the total distance is going to be 13 plus root 52, which is 20.2 meters to three significant figures. Why is it? Why is it bigger? He took, he took a longer route. He's not doing a direct route. His displacement is the same, but the distance of his journey is different because displacement is the vector quantity and distance is the scalar quantity, OK? The way I like to think of displacement is it's almost as if at the beginning of the situation you took a picture, at the end of the situation you took a picture, and you just wanted to say what was different about the two things. You started there, you ended there, OK? Um, and then the second question is pretty quick. It says that a raccoon, I've got a nice little picture of a raccoon down there, uh, raccoon has a velocity of 3 minus 1 ms to the minus 1, meaning meters per second. Determine the angle the trajectory of the raccoon makes with the unit vector i. The trajectory means the direction of the motion. The trajectory of it is the direction that it's, it's moving in. So this one, definitely a sketch is going to be helpful again for this one. So if I just extend my page a little bit so I've got perhaps a little bit more space here. The raccoon is moving three spaces to the right and one space down. In fact, not even three spaces, three meters to the right and one meter down every second. This is the direction that it's moving in. And it wants to know the, the angle that it makes with the unit vector i. Well, it starts from here. So this is the unit vector i in this direction because we know that i is going to the right. So we're trying to find out this angle that we've got here. I'm going to call it alpha. Um, what do I need to use for this? Do you remember this from the vectors? Good. You're going to have to do your trigonometry here. So we know that this is 1 and this is 3. I've just called it 1 rather than minus 1 because we're just interested in the, what the angle is, OK? And we know that tan alpha is the opposite over the adjacent. So alpha is either arc tan or inverse tan of a third. Make sure I'm in the right mode. And I come with 18.4 degrees. But I think that answer needs a bit more detail. What does that answer need added to it to make sure that it's, it's really clear what's happening here? If, if, um, if it said here, determine the angle that it makes with the unit vector i, and I just said 18.4 degrees, you wouldn't necessarily know the way that this raccoon is going. Shahan, what would you need to add to this to make it clear which way the raccoon is going? Good, good. You would say 18.4 degrees below the unit vector i. Because it could have been going 18.4 degrees above, which would have mean instead of the raccoon going down like this, the raccoon would have been coming up like this. What would the raccoon's velocity be if it was 18.4 degrees above the unit vector i? Yeah, it would be 3 and then plus, plus 1 here instead of 3 minus 1. Because it would instead of it going 3 and down, it would be going 3 and up. Okay? So there is just a sheet of questions, the exercise 8D questions. Um, if you've got them just one between you, um, all I want you to do is to just read through the first question that's on there. 
I want you to just decide what is the maths that needs to be done for each of these questions. Let me just have a quick look on because I've just given my one away. Question one, you can just do out loud. You can just talk to the people on your table, see if you can do questions A to F. It shouldn't be very difficult. Um, question two and question three and question four, I just want you to talk through what would you do for each of those parts. I'm going to give us, say, four minutes to decide, to decide how we would do them and then we're going to move on, okay?